again. Uh, it's been a very, very uh, exciting week. Uh, thank God for traveling grace and mercy just coming back from Sacramento. Amen. Uh, was up there for our Western Regional Conference uh, which was very successful. Focusing in a lot on education. The education divide is becoming so great especially in our community and it's going to be uh, critical because our young children here uh, without proper resources without proper funding in the community and without proper information they are not going to be able to compete in this next phase that's happening technology is taking over completely you just met while in Sacramento with uh, a couple of tech firms, especially Amazon, whether you know it or not, the tech world is moving and has moved a lot of their uh, facilities expanding from the Silicon Valley there in the uh, San Jose area right up the street there in Culver City. They're building this, this real tall building uh, what buildings? It's one right there, like on National and um, uh, National and uh, Washington. It's gonna be a technology center. They're moving down by Sony, further up west on Washington uh, near Culver, and they're again building right in that Culver City area. So, you know, my question was, who? was going to be able to have these jobs that are coming in. And only those that have studied the STEM system, science, technology, E is for electronics, electronics, and M for Mathematics. Amen, amen. See, some of us don't even know what STEM programming is. 
They are they have in a lot of cases purposely omitted telling that to the inner city. So our children are not gonna be prepared for this next phase that's coming. Whether you know we look at it as being a benefit, and it is in a lot of ways, but look at what's even happening at, at a lot of places of business that you go to. People are becoming eliminated and automation is in. Amen, amen. Amen. Well, maybe I don't go nowhere, but they're they're setting up now. There's a lot of people, especially at the grocery stores. And at places of service where you don't have to wait in line, you can go scan and, and pay and bag yourself. Amen. 7 Eleven, CBS, Galberson, Ralph's, a lot of these places. And what it has done, it has eliminated jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And machines are there. Go to McDonald's now. They have kiosks. They want you to go make your order there. So you get a number, a ticket come up. You go to the to the uh, uh, counter and get your food to go. They are they're eliminating the jobs that we once had. Amen, amen. So where is that going to leave us? We're already in trouble economically. We're already in trouble academically. And now we're going to be in trouble, further trouble, as it relates to the workforce. Amen. So that's why it's critical. There are two things that are very critical. Number one, please, please, brother, please, sister, fill out your census report. Amen, amen. Yeah. Please fill out your census report. you got to move away from this mindset of, oh, I don't want nobody to know where I'm at, and I don't know the government. They already know. If you have a cell phone, Amen. Amen. I don't care if it's Verizon, I don't care if it's at and I don't care if it's Sprint, I don't care if it's Metro PC, I don't care if it's Obama phone. They know where you are, so don't sit up there and say, I don't want them to know. They know when you signed up for it, they knew where you were. Amen. Amen. Another thing is, uh, uh, be careful with all of this good stuff that we love and think that it's so beneficial uh when you get those of you and i'm not knocking if you have it just be careful those of you that have siri in your house and and what's the other one's name alexa they never go off and they are monitoring there's a device inside that's monitoring your entire house whether you are there or not. You have to understand the time in which we live in. Uh, Mr. Orwell did in 1999 a book said Big Brother's watching you. Well, he is. It, you think it's in the satellite up there and the drones. No, it's already in your house. They, they created back in the late 70s, early 80s out in Cyprus Fiber optics, fiber optics, where when you turn off your TV, you thought fiber optics was always on, so they could see and track a lot of things that's going on and hear what's going on in your house. So you have to be careful, even the things that you say, because there are certain code words when we get angry. We get angry and get hot. There are certain cold words that you say that go into a database. And if we're not careful, watch, watch the plan of the world now, especially with this individual we have in the White House. Amen, amen. They're going to start coming to your house, knocking on the doors and asking you questions about some of the statements that you have made, you know, when you start talking about all the blow up the White House, mm -hmm. you go on a list. Amen. Oh, wow. Somebody ought to kill that orange oh, man, it goes on a list. <laughs> you have to be extremely careful. Now, it, it, the technology has been good, but it's also been, and, it go, and it's going to be very, very, very dangerous for us. They're already taking away things yeah. from us. Yeah. So we have to yeah. fill out the census report. Last, but surely not least, please get out and vote. Yeah. 
When y'all said your vote didn't count, you right. see what it did. Because you didn't want to get up and go and vote. And they're always systematically trying to take things away, voter suppression. They want you to they want you to have to go somewhere else uh, to uh, uh, voting polling places. Well, to counteract we have right now in place and in system where you can vote early, you can vote now. You don't have to go to a polling place. You just need to vote. Amen. So I don't have no excuse about what you don't I don't feel like going over there. We will bring the ballot to you and take it to the post office ourselves. Amen, amen, amen. But we need everyone to vote. Lastly, uh, this Saturday, this Saturday, 11 a.m. here at Cedar Grove, we are hosting a town hall with a potential, well, she's not a potential, but she's a candidate running for the district attorney. We got to get rid of Jackie Lacey. Amen. Her name is Rachel Rossi. She's a candidate. We also have the other uh, candidate that we're trying to work out date and time. And Rachel Rossi will be with us Saturday morning at 11 a.m. from 11 uh, to 12 and then uh, social from 12 to 1 where you can ask questions, her agenda, what she's planning to do. We have to get people in that will work for us. Amen. 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 Jackie Lacey's been in office and has not convicted one dirty cop Amen. that has shot our black children and ladies and men down in the street and said that evidence was inconclusive. How more conclusive do you need? He shot and they died. So uh, 11 o'clock here at Cedar Grove. All right? All right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, I'd love to see you here on this Saturday. Uh, it's prayer time. We need to pray. Yes, hallelujah. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn, there's a responsibility that we have. Yes. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face. Then, then we will hear from heaven. And he will heal the land. Amen. Amen. So those of you that have a prayer request, you stand to your feet. We'll pray with and for you. Because everybody needs prayer. Amen. Everybody needs prayer. who just uh, returned from uh, getting out of ICU and double pneumonia. Uh, again, with all this stuff that's in the air, the, the virus that's going on, we want to definitely keep our neighbors and our friends in prayer. A lot of times we pray about me, myself, and I, but we tend to forget the ones that are next to us. Our neighbors. So we definitely want to remember them this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We give your name the praise because it is in you we live, we move, have our being. We ask you for your forgiveness today of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We thank you today for those that have been tested and tried on every side. Nonetheless, our faith and our confidence has been in thee that you are the one and the only true living God. You brought us from a mighty long way. You brought us all week long. Traveling place through danger, seen and unseen, back and forth from work. You gave us the ability to get up every morning. Sometimes our bodies were racked with pain, but we got up. Yes, yes, yes. Gave us the strength to make it through the day. Yes, yes. We pray for those, Lord God, that are on the prayer list. We pray for the names that have been called, but most of all, we pray for our brother and our sister that's close by. Yes, yes. We not say anything. 
Just because a smile on my is on their face does not mean their heart is not broken. Yes, yes. Just because a smile is on their face does not mean that their eyes have not been filled with tears. Yes, yes. Just because a smile is on their face does not mean that they didn't toss and turn all night long. But we thank you, Lord God, that you are the answer to each and every one of our requests. And bless this church. Strengthen us right now. Keep us together as a family. Let no harm or danger. When the enemy comes in like a flood, lift up a standard against the wiles of the devil. We thank you, Lord God, for those that you get ready to send in, that those that are out there looking for a church home. Let us be a place of refuge. Let us be a place of comfort. Let us be a place of peace. That they will find everything that they need. And we give it all to you right now in the name of Jesus. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you that you know the ends from the beginning, the first and the last. There's nothing that ever sneaks up on you because you're already aware of it. Prepare us, Lord God. Strengthen us. Most of all, let us look unto you. All of our help comes from you. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. All right, put your hands together and give God a praise. All right, we're going to receive our offering. The choirs go sing and I'm going to give you a message. And then we're going to move on into the next phase. This is this is Black History Month. I see my brothers and sisters have some garb on this morning. Hey, Amen. This is Black History. Every day is Black History 24 7, 365. All right. Prepare for your offering right now. <laughs> Choir, go give us some good giving music singing. Until now, 
kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Verse number three and four in Matthew chapter number 14. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him, put him in prison for the sake of Herodians, of Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. From verse number four, it's not lawful for you to have her. I want to talk just for a few moments uh, from the subject or the theme, where is John? Where is John? Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you and we bless you now. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Hide us behind the cross. They see more of thee and us of me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My name is John the Forerunner. Or John the Immerser, better known as John the Baptist. I was born in the Herodian kingdom of Judea. My parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth, were an elderly couple and I was born to them in answer to their prayers mm -hmm. sure and promise. Amen. My occupation is I am a Jewish itinerant preacher, mm. meaning I am a traveling preacher. That's what I, do. I have no permanent nor stable address. <coughs> the place where I reside, I live in obscurity. Mm. Uh, in the desert or the wilderness. The stars are my light and the ground is my bed. My food supplement consists of wild locusts and honey. I have no 7-Eleven, no McDonald's, no Subway, no Popeyes or no family famous restaurant. I eat wild honey. Hallelujah. My clothing and attire, I don't shop at the latest fashion boutiques. I don't shop at the fashion stores. I don't subscribe to Esquire, GQ, or none of the fashionable magazines. I wear simply camel hair. My message that I preach every day is repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. My message is clear as I confront mm -hmm. the hypocrisies of the religious establishment mm -hmm. and I expose the immorality of Herod and Donald Trump. Amen, amen, amen. I fear no man but God. My mission is to prepare the way Yes. For one who cometh who is mightier than me, I am the ending of nearly 400 years of prophetic silence and pave the way for the Messiah. I come in the spirit of Elijah, preaching a message of repentance and baptism. Yes, yes. The uniqueness of my birth 
was my mother in her old age conceived me. Hmm. And upon knowledge of conception, she went down after a few months to visit her cousin by the name of Mary. Amen. And when Mary explained to Elizabeth that she was also with child, I leaped for joy in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I was not afraid to tell men and women of their sins and transgressions. I had no fear to tell the religious leaders of that time that they were wrong and they had not been faithful to their call. I step on toes. It is my mission to make people feel uncomfortable. It is my mission to make people think before they speak. Amen. Amen. I was very distraught. But I used what I had and where I was to proclaim the message of the kingdom. So loud was my voice and so strong that even in the wilderness and in the desert, the sound of my voice reached the palace of Herod and I made his knights uncomfortable. Yes. My voice was strong that it pierced Herod's ears mm. until all he would do to try to drown me out mm. was throw party after party with music and dance. But I still let him know mm. the kingdom of God and of heaven was at hand. Yeah. I didn't care what people thought of me. I didn't care that the people didn't want to come around me because I didn't look the role of those religious leaders. I didn't wear long and luxurious and fancy colorful robes. I just gave a message in my camel skin. Yes, yes. I was determined to make sure that the way was paved mm -hmm. for the one coming after me yes, uh, yes. who would bring life and salvation to a dark, dismal, and disillusioned world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My fellow companions mm -hmm. would come and I would baptize them. But I would also let them know that there was one coming after me who was mightier than me. Who would not just baptize you with water, but would baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So mighty is he that's coming after me that I declare no matter how great you feel that I, John the Baptist, am. I'm not even worthy no, to bow down and unloose his sandals. No, but I came today, see the grove, to tell you as John uh -huh. these two important things. Number one, we cannot walk in fear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, yes, yes. but of power and love. Yes, and of a sound mind. I, like Elijah, was given, was given a command and a mission to go and tell the king that he was wrong. Yes, yes. Elijah, if you remember, was told Go and tell the king that there will be no rain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for three years and six months. God shut up the heavens and caused a famine to come in the land. Yes, yes. 
But my question is, where is John today? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Where is that person that's not afraid <laughs> to stand up <laughs> and declare the word of God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes. Where are the religious leaders <laughs> who are more willing to sit down and Get a plaque. Yes. Get a certificate. Mm. And even get sponsored a chicken dinner. Mm -hmm. no, no. Then to tell these leaders yes, yes. That they're wrong. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Tell these leaders you have taken away from our community. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're destroying our school. Yes, yes. You're leaving us. Thread-bearing, poor, broke, and lonely. Yes, yes. Where are the leaders that will march to the city hall, yes, the council chambers, yes. and not just identify, but demand mm -hmm. that something be done with the homeless population? Amen, amen. Where are the leaders that will stand up and say, you got the money and the power to help those that need medical, health care, and attention. You can bypass any law and make it where people that need food can be fed on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, yes, yes. When you stop and consider how much food hmm. is being thrown away. Yes, yes. How much food that could be given to those that are hungry. Hallelujah. How much food can be given to churches as a means of helping the community, but yet they'd rather throw it away. Hallelujah. 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 Where are the leaders? That will stand up and not compromise yes, and speak like Elijah and John. Yeah, right now. Where are the leaders mm. who will speak against the immoralities of our nation? Mm. All right. It is questionable yeah. how people could vote for a man. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That openly says and openly declares mm -hmm. his total disrespect for women. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And instead of somebody checking him, yeah. they left with him. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we had preachers. Amen. Preachers. Yes, hallelujah. Not blaming the parishioner, preachers yeah. that went to the White House mm -hmm. and sat down at a table that he provided. McDonald Big Macs that were cold. Any kind of way. Yeah. Where the preachers yeah. that will listen to a man yeah. that says, You don't have anything else to lose. Uh, Why don't you vote for me? Yeah. And they drink his Kool Aid. Yeah. And we find ourselves going in reverse. Because they feared him more than God. This is not to the parishioner today. This is to us, the preachers. We're going to be in trouble with God. Amen. 
And we're going to be held accountable. Because we didn't cry loud and spare not. We didn't lift up our voices as a trumpet in Zion and speak against the wickedness that befalls our people. Yes. Lastly, where are the preachers that won't help your children by giving them an opportunity for a quality education. We have now teachers that run into our community not because they want to but because by law and job they have to. They stay two or three years not concerned or caring about our children. Just in Riverside County alone, just a few weeks ago, white teacher had one black student in her class and found it necessary to slap this child in the face three times in one classroom setting. Well, they ended them power preachers that know about this. In the end of the empire, a little girl was socked in the eye by a white boy. And before she could leave school, white girl pushed her down and scarred up her knees. And when her parents came to question and inquire about their daughter who says, I don't want to go back to that school with a black eye and bloody knees and the school administration did absolutely nothing because they felt that it was nothing harmful done. Where are the Johns now that will go out there and tell them folks in that school that we will not tolerate our children being abused and bullied and misled and mishandled because you don't want them there. This is supposed to be America. This is supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. I don't know about you, but I'm sorry. This is just me talking. You ain't got to do it. This is just me. It's hard for me to put my hand over my heart when they play the national anthem. Because the words and the contents in it, they don't mean it when they talk about for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I look back on our history where our people went to war for this country. And when they came back, they were not even allowed to do certain things. They were spit on. They were talked about. They were ridiculed. And some even hung. A man went to fight in World War II, went back home in the South in the uniform on. And they stripped him of his uniform and hung him on a tree, buck naked. Where and how can I say it? Yeah. The land of the free yeah. and the home of the brave. Yeah. Look at the Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah. The white men that was flying them flying fortresses were getting shot out of the air and the only way that they was able to defeat Hitler in Berlin was the Tuskegee, the Red Tailsmen yeah. Yeah. that flew them to Berlin and back. Yeah. Yeah. And yet when they come back to this country and have the parade 
they were omitted and told them they couldn't participate in the parade. Fighting for a country that won't even fight for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yet you want me to salute? No, that's right. Good job. And you sit up there and have this man saying, make America great. When was America great? And for who was it great for? Got this senator sitting up there on his little high lofty seat talking about we need to go back to where it used to be where black folk knew how to stay in their place. I wish I would see him. I'm not a man that, 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 that pro, you know, I, 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 I mean, all I say is just post bail for me. Because the city suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. I refuse to sit back any longer and have my mouth gag because people say it's not politically correct. Well, it ain't correct the way they treat my children. It's not correct the way they treat my sisters. It's not correct at how they incarcerate black men at the highest rate. We got more black men in prison incarcerated than. 80% of the countries in the world. Right, 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 right. And you say don't say nothing. You say be quiet. No way. You say that it's time for us to be quiet and just be like the good old folk want us to be. Ain't like the ancestors. <laughs> Somebody. Yes. Yeah. Has got in this day. to stand up and be kind. Yes. Yeah. We gotta have a job. Yes, yes. That's are not afraid yes, to speak truth to power. Yes, what is the purpose of us coming to church for? Why are we coming getting all this Bible and then we don't use it? Why are we sitting up in Sunday school learning and then yet don't apply? Amen, amen. Never forget. Hmm. Never forget those four little girls yes. Ooh, Lord Jesus. in Birmingham, Alabama. Amen, amen. In Sunday school. Ooh. And the wickedness yes. and evilness yes. Yes. of this country yes. placed a bomb yes. and killed those babies. Yes. 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 And just because they're not putting bombs in churches does not mean that they're not killing our babies. Where's John? All them sitting up in them big, beautiful mega churches with stained glass windows but will not stand up for the righteousness of our people. All these preachers, and I don't care which one of you looking at the broadcast, I'm talking to you. You'd rather have a photo op standing up against a, next to a politician than to take that politician by the side and telling him you wrong. You're taking away everything I can, I don't care, black, white, Jew. That's right. Latina, Latino. Yeah. Don't make no difference. If you're taken away from the people of God, yes, yes. then you're no different than Herod the king that wound up taking the head of John the Baptist. Yes. <laughs> Tired of these coward preachers. Yes. They only want to show up when the television camera's around. Amen. They only want to show up when they can get their name in the paper. Hallelujah. They only want to show up because they got a title. That's it. And they run around telling everybody, I run this and I run that. And I run. You ain't doing nothing but running your mouth. Amen. 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 Our people are dying. Yes, they yes. are. Daily. They're suffering. Yes. Daily. Mm -hmm. They're trying to change us. It's making us incoherent by shoving pills down our throat. We become a pill-ridden nation. When the Bible said, by his stripes, 
we are healed. I'm not knocking the doctors, but I sure know a doctor that's better than the doctor in Beverly Hills. Amen. Amen. The name is Dr. Jesus. Dr. Jesus came down through 42 generations. Just to save and heal a wretch like me, Dr. Jesus. You don't need an appointment to talk to Dr. Jesus. You can call him anytime. One thing I like about Dr. Jesus, Dr. Jesus will walk in on you any day and any time that you need him. All you have to do is call him by his name. He's never too busy that he can't visit a little old something like me. He's never, 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 never out of voice reach. Said you can call him. His ear is not too heavy that he cannot hear. Don't you love somebody that has ability to hear your faintest cry? And that's why he said I came to Jesus. Just as I was, I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Because he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I belong, and the joy that we share. I said, do you really, really, really know him today? Won't he be there in your time of sickness? I said, I know somebody. I know somebody. He's the son of David, the seed of Abraham. Stone you out the mountain. He's the meek and a powerful man. His name is Jesus. To his own, and his own received him not. But I'm so glad one Friday evening they took him to a hill called Calvary. They hung him high and they stretched him wide and they dropped him low. They talked about him, they spat on him, they had whipped him. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. <laughs> 